This is the Security Executive Council presentation on managing risk in business. My name is Rad Jones and my associate's name is Jerry Miller. Jerry and I developed this presentation to help you understand the importance of dealing with a critical incident in a structured team approach. Regardless of the size of your company, a critical incident management team will ensure a more effective and timely recovery from a critical incident. And why is this important to a business organization? Well, consider this. Research has disclosed that a significant number of the companies that suffer a major business interruption will go out of business within two years. We hear the term crisis apply to any number of events that may occur in the workplace. It's a term that sometimes becomes overused. This is why we prefer the term critical incident to differentiate from a so-called crisis that may be handled in the normal scope of business operations. Remember that you handle crises on a daily basis. Situations such as delayed shipments, equipment breakdowns, or minor employee disputes. The transition into managing critical incidents is made easier if you have a structured response capability. The protection of the company's image and reputation is a very important objective of critical incident management. Many of you may recall the Tylenol incident, when seven people from the Chicago area died from ingesting Tylenol caplets, which contained cyanide poison. Johnson & Johnson, the makers of Tylenol, found their image and reputation in jeopardy, but responded with a hastily formed group of executives to work in a team approach to manage the critical incident. First of all, the team took action to determine that the poisoning did not occur during the manufacturing process. The team then decided to remove all Tylenol products from the shelves of their distributors nationwide. At this point, the team initiated the development of tamper-proof packaging and launched a media campaign to recover consumer confidence. Johnson & Johnson emerged as a leader in tamper-proof packaging and a forerunner in private sector critical incident management response. Just as with Johnson & Johnson, the goal is to limit the impact of the critical incident to the extent possible, thereby shortening the time it takes to resume normal business operations. Remember, as Jerry's discussed, you will be dealing with multiple organizational entities during a crisis, and these entities must be working from the same page. Key personnel in the company should have the appropriate base of knowledge, background, and able to draw upon resources to resolve the situation as quickly as possible. During a critical incident, the goal is to reach high quality decision making in the shortest time possible. In order to accomplish this goal, information must be gathered quickly through effective and fast communications and utilization of all available resources in the company. Even before the creation of an incident management team and the development of the component plans, a business organization should conduct a risk assessment and a vulnerability analysis in order to identify critical business processes and potential points of failure. There may be additional components for your critical incident plan depending on factors such as geographic vulnerability to certain weather extremes. However, this list includes some basic information and procedures which the plan should include. Organizations doing business outside of the U.S. need to be prepared in the event of a kidnapping situation involving employees a contractor or member of their respective families. Since ransom negotiations are a fact of life in many foreign countries, a qualified security consultant should be engaged to assist in the development of kidnap response plans.